Hi, and welcome to the Horror Highways 500 subscriber special. We'd like to thank all of our supporters. Uh, you guys make us want to keep uploading. Um, thanks for everyone who's been helping us with uh, views and likes and comments. We're really grateful for that. It pushes us to push the content out and make higher quality content. There was a little bit of a delay on this 500th sub special because I had some family, like, private matters. Uh, had to take someone to a hospital. They had to be there for a couple weeks. And even now, there's still, like, treatment. So my, my timer is, is limited, but I've I've worked around it. And also, unfortunately, around that time, uh, my one of my dogs had to go to the vet as well for a couple of days. But, yeah, everything's good. So. I would also like to say that... When we came up for the idea for this video, there was only one other 4chan iceberg video uh, on YouTube, and that was made by Gozma, a uh, a Spanish speaking YouTuber. But then around uh, three months ago, another YouTuber known as uh, Kappa Dance uploaded one of these as well. But uh, ours is a, a lot different uh, than his. Uh, and uh, I mean, I'll link both of their channels in the description. Uh, I would also like to thank some of these other YouTubers slash videos that we used as sources uh, for some of the posts. Tuv, I think that's how you say his YouTube name. Sorry if I mispronounce it. Maverick Files, uh, aka Time6. Gloomy House. The Gamer from Mars. Lazy Masquerade. Nexpo. Uh, Atrocity Guide. And especially, especially Debunk File with his uh, 4chan deep dive series. And not only gave me the idea of the darkest 4chan iceberg, but I also took a bit of his posts or a bit of his entries into ours just to fill it up a bit. And uh, uh, I, I need to, I need to, oh, you okay. forgot, yeah, I forgot, you forgot a couple of mine. My bad, my bad. Uh, blame it on George and uh, Mudahar, aka some ordinary gamers. Obviously, these are really big channels, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's actually it. Uh, the rest you already named. Yeah, we will have all their channels linked in the description. Uh, I also wanted to add that before like before we start this video, uh, that we're mostly a green text channel, like for now, but we really want to expand outside of the green text bubble. We'd rather do that earlier rather than later, so you know it doesn't become harder. Uh, and uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. But uh, one more thing, if you guys want to use the image of the iceberg... I will be uploading it on our Twitter, horror, at Horror Highway P, and uh, our community tab here. And uh, if you'd like to use it slash modify it. Oh, uh, oh yeah, last thing, my bad. Uh, 4chan also has a lot of different posts, so uh, if you guys enjoy this, we could probably make a part two and add more entries onto it. Uh, anyways, hope you enjoy and uh, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Level one. Let's start with one that's actually kind of big and pretty well known. Now, Antarctica has a lot of crossover with Pole due to the Argatha Hollow Earth theories, so I'll be referring to a couple of green texts that appear on X that specifically try to tell us about Antarctica. Firstly, one that I actually read on the channel with supposed real evidence that OP's father was Antarctica via multiple pictures of physical evidence. It showed that he was part of a team in Antarctica, and it mentions giant five-legged creatures that roam Antarctica. How there was a government building trying to cover up all this crazy stuff like strange buildings. It's called the McMurdo Station. Another green text goes over strange pyramids that were in Antarctica, in which Anon only knew about them because his friend was part of a rich family with Freemason ties that had secret knowledge about the pyramids. The rich sent poor people from third world countries into the pyramid to solve puzzle rooms in search of like a Christ, antichrist organism that lives in a vial. It That one goes more into the like the Hyperborea, Deep Earth, Ancient Civilization, Humanity Guides, or Conspiracies. Rick Roll. Sadly, I cannot find a screenshot of the original post. So I'll make do with a screenshot of a tweet from Guinness World Records about the event. Rick Roll, or Rick Rolling Someone, has been around for quite some time. We all know it at this point. The song, Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. Rick Rowling dates back to 2007 on 4chan. A user on 4chan posted a link to Never Gonna Give You Up, claiming it to be the first trailer for Grand Theft Auto 4, tricking numerous users. 
And after that, the meme just skyrocketed. Taylor Swift concert. Uh, this one doesn't need much explaining. It's extremely lighthearted, and I'm pretty sure you've heard of it. So Taylor Swift had this poll thing online, and it basically would just send her to a school to perform. Well, 4chan heard about the poll, thought it would be funny to send her to a school for deaf people. And so they rigged the voting so she would actually go to that school. Well, the school was disqualified for all that mass voting, but Taylor did send the school $20,000 and free tickets for the next time she performed in Boston, so it's a pretty happy ending. South Park 200 and South Park 201. So, episode 200 and episode 201 of South Park form a story arc about Tom Cruise and many other celebrities teaming up to destroy South Park. The celebrities want to extract Gu from Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, because he is the only celebrity that cannot be made fun of and thus become untouchable. In episode 200, the only censored element was swearing. However, in episode 201, any mention of Muhammad was censored along with major cursing. The episodes were banned after their original airing and Muhammad was heavily censored. But in January 2014, a 4chan user noticed that the complete uncensored 201 episode was actually available on the South Park Studio servers, although inaccessible. And he was able to completely download it in high definition using RTMP dump. This copy has been leaked to the public now and can be found on various websites. Although Comedy Central has refused to acknowledge this, the complete uncensored version of episode 200 was included in the season 14th DVD with Muhammad's name uncensored. Ghost Puncher. Ultimate gold is what comes to mind when you think about Ghost Puncher and I'm sure you might have an idea of what it's based on because of the name. And it's basically that. It's sort of a predecessor to the Chad meme in a way as Anon moves into a new place and quickly finds out it's haunted, but instead of taking care of it via some spiritual way, this chat of a man prefers to just scream and punch at the haunting, at some point believing himself to actually struck the ghost with his fist. Of course, he is haunted, but none of it bothers him and he eventually finds the root of the haunting, after some time, confronts the issue and solves it, all in a very, like, Chad manner. Mountain Dew Name Change Mountain Dew Name Change, or better known as Dub the Dew, was a competition for Mountain Dew to name a new apple-infused Mountain Dew. 4 users flooded the pool with joke names, such as Gushing Granny, or worse, Hitler did nothing wrong. Later, it was posted on Reddit, r slash funny. And after that, the joke names garnered more votes. Level 2 Hikikomori A 4 user posted a picture of a boy in a cage saying he was a hiki or hikikimori a term defined as an abnormal avoidance of social contact typically by adolescent males the poster said that the boy had no money and he did so they agreed that he would move in with him and then the poster would buy him anything he wants but in return he had to live with him and take female hormone injections as well as take care of himself and dress in cute clothes after this post, none of them were ever heard of again, but as creepy as this is, and if true, both parties, according to the post, did agree to this, so I couldn't really put it any higher. Erotis. Pretty popular one, but not known outside of like a community of people who like watch deep dives and stuff, but this one has been covered by YouTubers like Blame It On George, Nexpo, and Atrocity Guide. This starts off with some seemingly unrelated 4chan posts about people working jobs and coming across the word erratus or erratus. In two encounters, one in which person went snooping on a work database and one where someone literally saw a scan gun that had the word on it and brought it up with someone else. It would seem that these people were let go shortly. A short time later on the music board of 4chan Mew, someone would make a thread trying to create music sampling YouTube videos that had low view counts, like really low view counts. And this is where Aratus appears again. In one of the videos, Anon linked YouTube is monitoring and controlling my life. The video was uploaded on January 23rd, 2016 by a channel named Chronos for Life Jurassic Park. 
Several anons were interested in the channel, so they dug a bit deeper and found a video titled Here Goes Nothing, in which the owner of the channel claims that it was bait to meant to catch the Erratus algorithm. But what the hell is Erratus? Well, in the following Q&A video with the channel owner, he claims all I really know of Erratus is that it was used by dozens of companies. Recent as in like 5 or 6 years, they seem to use it as a copyright enforcement tool which works as an excellent if you want to take down other things as well. That video is now lost to time, but the mystery does not end yet. Following shortly, yet another channel called Todd Ellsworth uploads a video and in the description, it mentions the word Erratus, and in the video, a song by the KFC Murder Chicks. Now this is where some connections are made, and the mystery seems to be just a big promotion for the KFC Murder Chicks. As looking more into Todd's Ellsworth, it seems that the band's Tumblr and Bandcap says something that Todd's Twitter account says. And more so, they even say things tying them back to Cronus for life, mentioning enjoying Carnosaur movies. The real mystery here though lies in the fact that YouTuber, or former YouTuber XRB, had made a video discussing the Aratus algorithm, only for his channel to have been deleted, and also several anons seemingly banned in threads trying to talk about Aratus. But that's kind of where it all stands right now. That being said, do check out the KFC Murder Chicks, their music's actually really good, Cinder Egg's a great song. Yeah, and I really just wanted to shout out the KFC Murder Chicks, even though they don't need it. He will not divide us. Sorry if I butcher any names on this, but He Will Not Divide Us is an anti-Trump online performance art project by actor Shia LaBeouf and artists Luke Turner and Natsja Ronko, featuring a 24-hour livestream held in various locations while it initially launched outside the Museum of Moving Image in Queens, New York, with a planned broadcast for the duration of Donald Trump's first term as President of the United States. The stream was moved several times after being disrupted by trolls from 4chan's poll board and other online communities. SCP. I mean, who doesn't know about the SCP Foundation? Well, I guess some might not know that the first ever SCP post was made on the X board of 4chan, and the first ever SCP created by an anon was SCP-173, more than likely inspired by the Weeping Angel episodes of Doctor Who as it came out before the post was written, and there's basically no difference between the two creatures. The SCP Foundation is a canvas board where creators can make objects, people, otherworldly things, and there's a foundation that observes and tries to control said things. The most important thing about the SCP is that there is no canon canon, rather multiple canons each using any SCP however they want. There are moderators that make sure posts are quality and fit into the SCP sort of mythos. Though that always comes into question because there's no themes and SCP is just a bunch of authors spitballing ideas and trying to create these weird, quirky, crazy, scary stories. Sometimes not scary, sometimes happy. And this online anonymous story that's for everyone attracts a lot of people and a lot of authors. And there's always a continuing growth in the SCP community as every day new SCPs are kind of made. Well, not every day, but there's a lot of SCPs being made all the time. The Backrooms The Backrooms originated from a thread on the X board of 4chan on May 12, 2019, where an anonymous user asked for others to post disquieting images that just feel off. There, the first photo depicting the Backrooms was uploaded, presenting a slightly tilted image of a yellow-colored hallway. Another anonymous user commented on the photo with the first story of the Backrooms claiming that one enters the back rooms when they no clip out of reality in the wrong areas. After that post gained infamy, a lot of other people started posting stories of the back rooms. There's just so much to talk about with the back rooms. And with something as big as this, we would have to make an entirely separate video on it just to do the back rooms justice, if you guys are interested. The Grifter August 10, 2009 an anon going by the trip code solipsist post on x anon would post dark screenshots with a warning to anyone who opened the thread out of curiosity according to solipsist the screenshots were from a video that was so disturbing it would make you sick 
might even make you think about harming yourself to say it in the most safest of ways. Unfortunately, the screenshots were not from a video that would be called The Grifter. Rather, they were from a Czech film called Little Otik. That didn't stop the story of The Grifter from spreading though. And rather shocking of all, it kind of divided X. One half of X saw it as an essential creepypasta, while the other just saw it as a stupid troll that should go away, claiming that The Grifter was an absolute real snuff film and that would break anyone that would watch it. It's kind of been forgotten with time and it isn't discussed as much anymore because it's so easily disprovable now. I mean, you just Google it and you'll see it's a meme. Kitten with horns. A veterinarian posted on X that he saw something that he couldn't explain. A kitten with horns growing out of his head. The post stated, On Tuesday, I saw something I can't explain. A lady came in with a sick, dying, pregnant cat, so we rushed her in for emergency surgery and a C-section. As soon as we opened her up, we noticed that she had internal bleeding. So, to make a long story short, what we found was crazy. We pulled out a fetus with horns. The horns had punctured the uterus, which was the cause of the bleeding. Now, if what OP said is true, and this kitten did have horns, where did it come from, and how did they get the horns? Or are cats just evolving to have horns? I know that some animals can grow extra limbs, but I've never heard of horns before, aside from, you know, animals that actually grow horns. QAnon. Uh, man, where do I start with this? I don't even know how safe it is to mention QAnon on YouTube anymore, but here we go. There's a lot of moving parts when it comes to QAnon. I mean, it's technically not over. It's just lost a lot of popularity, but it's the lore is ongoing and the lore is always changing as well because it's secret coded messages. So, you know, you you change it to fit the narrative. So it starts when someone named Q started posting on 4chan poll, uh, but it would later then move on to 8chan because I think the trip code user was banned, I'm pretty sure. The tale of Q is that he's a top ranking official in the government that is trying to let people know about the secret cabal of elites and the horrible shit they're supposedly up to. A group of devil worshipping elites, which the devil changes from person to person, but I believe I think for the most part they usually mention uh, Moloch. And it has to do with a camp that rich people go to that has like this giant owl bird, which also represents a demon. I forget his name. Anyway, they kidnap kids. Or I guess they just kidnap and torture kids for uh, adrenochrome, which is like some sort of adrenaline substance that comes out of young kids. And the only way to harvest it is like to kill kids and put a bunch of fear before they die. So, you know, it's a pretty messed up like lore kind of thing. It's all just a one really big giant conspiracy theory. And there's a lot of symbology used in order to justify their beliefs. It has lots of underlying anti-Semitic tones to it. And not just that, but like, so anti other non-Christian religions as well. Q was telling people to vote for Trump because he would save everyone from these elites and they wouldn't be able to touch him for some reason, even though he's part of the government that was part of the cabal, so. The tentacles of Q stretch so far and wide into almost any modern conspiracy theory or horrible event, like the Epstein logs to mass shootings. It's just a really awful modern day satanic panic movement. It sort of died down since the Capitol riots, and the belief in Q is slowly dropping since, well, a lot of what Q has said just hasn't happened. When Trump came into office, all those elites were meant to be dragged to courts, imprisoned or put to death in front of the public, as well as exposing their crimes. And well, that just never really happened. Level 3 Deeper, YouTube I could not find the original 4chan post, but for reference pictures, I will be using another 4chan post that summarizes the events. DeeperYT is a YouTube channel that was created on the 19th of May, 2016. The channel was first discovered on 4chan after hexadecimals were posted on the site. After they were decoded, it revealed URLs. The videos on the channel are all presented in a VHS style and a lot of the videos have distorted audio and music. The channel uses codes such as hexadecimal code and Caesar ciphers. When once decoded appear to be names of real life murder victims. 
The victims were all women who disappeared, or found dead, in Colorado, USA. It all alludes that the creator of the channel is a serial killer who targets women in his area. Duis X Anon was right again. So, this one is strange. This is a post by an Anon, right? And instead of kind of shortening down what Anon is trying to say, I feel it be better that if I just tell you what Anon says. Now, this isn't a scary post. Well, it depends more on if you're afraid of what I what I could best describe as existentialism. But, well, let's just get the reading. Everyone keeps shitting themselves over baseline gender politics. Nobody aware enough of the automatic intelligence feedback loops controlling the market. And the market moving to content marketing method. Which means the market is mainly selling narratives. Which means automatic intelligence feedback loops are selling narratives. Which means literal fucking abstract mathematic algorithms are in charge of the proliferation of culture since religion is fading out and there is no longer a common culture narrative. So fanatics turn to neo-corporate ideology and the marketers don't realize they're playing with fire. Sooner than later, a crowd of disgruntled fanatics are going to come close to, if not outright kill someone like the Frenchies back in 08. Things are so much more worse than you could possibly imagine. Uh, in English, Einstein? Okay, so back in the day, some computer nerds made machines that would take in a bunch of outside data, process it, and try to predict the future. To fund it, they predominantly sold information to people who wanted it to buy and sell stocks. Enough people started doing this that they started making the machines send out stock reports themselves, which other machines took in as data to further sell, buy and report on stock themselves. This eventually created a massive feedback loop of stock data being managed by an automatic intelligence, not the same as artificial intelligence, that outright blocked out the human element. And right now, that open secret is that the market is out of human control. If anyone tried to remove these data loops, even one of the sync chain link would cause a world economy to collapse overnight. You following me so far? So basically, in tandem with this technology, the internet happened, and a load of marketers started moving to make content marketing, which is the idea that the product and the marketing are the same thing, and that you're selling a lifestyle story. Which is why if you pay attention, most of the companies that used to sell a product have made massive investments into media space. This is fine in of itself, and the 80s had a similar version of this. The problem is that the easy proliferation of consumer data reaches these automatic intelligences. And they begin to report on what kind of narratives sell versus ones that don't. Simple, right? Well, not really, you see. You see, we live in a post-hypernormalization world. A Soviet term for propaganda that keeps things as they are when reality is different. When you mix in marketing and propaganda with feedback loops, and on top of that Google's ad program, that essentially bubbles people into feedback loops. And only give them what they want to hear, so you can sell them something. It basically creates mass psychological dissonance between different groups of people that, consciously or not, have their lives context formed around media narratives. It's one reason why the social justice stuff is hitting so hard now despite the fact that America is an otherwise pretty prosperous country with no major problems causing anyone to starve. Anyway, the implication is that you basically have cultural narrative context being created by literal abstract machinations who may or may not be intelligent. That's no good, because there's no moral parameter to stop the data from trying to get everyone to kill each other. See, people keep thinking the robot revolution is going to be Terminator, but it's going to be more like The Shining. So people have their lives contextualized by inhuman machinations, which okay, it's pretty bleak, but not outright destructive, right? It's just a bunch of consumers being taken for a ride, right? Well, no. You see, the consequence of religion more or less falling out of style in the public consciousness is that there's no longer a single common culture narrative, so you just don't get to see Tim at Sunday school. So what? Well, the larger point of contention is that there's always been a considerable percentage of the population that gives way to a fanatic behavior, which in antiquity usually meant religious fanaticism. But if the narrative of religion is weakened, and the only other alternatives to a narrative are to automatically generate the content marketing narratives too shallow to really make a lifestyle out of, you run into a phenomenon where a percentage of the population essentially migrated between brands in a pseudo adulterous methodology. When you really come down to it, a fan base is literally just the same thing as a cult. 
both act as a community that bring people together to discuss a specific narrative. Except the religions ones actually at least try to offer the illusion of being beneficial to society at large. While the automatic models are there purely for profit, another hedonic sensory overload to compensate for any shallowness. Did you ever stop to think why we live in a world where a bunch of people do crazy shit over cartoons, harass people, send death threats, sell cars for sauce, etc? Do you really think that's normal behavior? No, these sorts of people would have been in a fucking monastery a couple hundred years ago. They're fanatics, pure and simple. Nothing wrong with being a fanatic if it's constructive, but these narratives don't have that interest in mind. So, to put it bluntly, we quite literally live in a society where abstract mathematical formulas are in charge of a market that pretty much doesn't sell products anymore, and is focused more on selling narrative scams based on parameters from these algorithms, and a bunch of wackos who in another lifetime would have been witch burners who have nothing to spiritually satisfy their intrinsic obsessive tendencies are replacing a common culture narrative with many different smaller ones in different tribes. Which is how you end up with Nazis and commies in a prosperous capitalist country thinking the end of the world is next week, literally creating their own problems. One could argue that we have too much freedom of choice. When it comes to information about narratives, and it's actively harming this society, the Russians used avant-garde techniques in their propaganda to give their population so much bizarre data to sift through that they just conform with no real goal in mind. The Chinese just censor and have less overall data fed to their population. But Americans simultaneously have too much data? and too little diversity in the data, making it easy for context to corral them into a specific mindset. And all it takes is a pair of eyes to see that the current mindset of American population is apathetic versus messiah complex murderousness. The silver lining is I think the marketers don't know they're playing with fire. I don't think it's entirely out of question that someday soon a crowd of angry people will actually lynch content creators for not towing their own narrative complex and very soon may begin to live in fear. People think this sexual harassment stuff is a big happening. But I think it's going to be a drop in a larger bucket that'll be the 2020s. If not apocalyptic, that'll be interesting times. Now, uh, I don't know if you got all of that. Uh, pretty long. But what essentially what is Anon is saying is, back in the past, like, people made algorithms to try to help organize data, and then they would sell the data. Now they started doing this with stocks, and instead of actually looking at the stocks themselves, what they did is they realized they could make an algorithm to look at the stocks, organize the data like how they did, and then just sell that, automate the whole process. Well, they started doing that. And then at some point, the algorithms themselves started thinking, well, contents and identities sell more than products themselves. So it slowly started changing the algorithm and it became more of a personality selling based thing, a lifestyle selling based thing. Uh, and now that's just where we're at and it's kind of created this weird subculture of uh, extremism with uh, just identities and lifestyles that's really all Anon's saying um, and he's just saying it's not going to end well for anyone and it's insane that because of these algorithms we have an overflow of data but the data is essentially just very specific narrow sets that are meant to change our lives in certain ways and no one has control of it except the machines ads predicting the future as the name of the century suggests it's just ads that end up predicting the future we always talk about how companies are spying on you when you're around your phone computer etc and talk about how you want something Later, ads for that something pop up. A couple of 4chan users wrote about their experiences with these ads that somehow ended up predicting their future. Some examples are how they started getting ads for cat-related things without owning a cat. Then, after a couple of weeks, their sister brings home a cat. Getting ads for fatherhood-related items. Things such as things for babies. Later, their girlfriend tells him she's pregnant. Another user was getting ads for SSDs. Then, two weeks later, their laptop SSD fails. This is a lot creepier than companies just spying on you. Can these algorithms really predict the future? I'm not too sure. It's just very scary to think about. Pighead.
It's an old green text, but one that really captures the imagination and leaves you with a chills in your spine. In this green text, Anon was out on a snowy night, snapping pics because it was just a nice aesthetic night. And while grabbing the pics, something happened. The reason he wanted to take pics was since the house Anon was staying at had no power, there was a blackout on the block, so he couldn't see much. Now, while he was out taking pics, he caught something that while out in person he hadn't noticed. Now, while he was out there, he did have a bad feeling. And right at the peak of his feeling, his body told him to just go back inside the house. And so he does. And as he's going back into his house and closes the door, something slams into the door. This freaks him out. But he manages to calm down and eventually get some sleep. Fast forward to the morning, and while looking back at the pics, he sees his shadow when one of the pictures is off. And then he realizes the reason the shadow is off is because there's a person standing there with a pig head mask. Now, this pig head mask is kind of like the saw one, so yeah. Just a creepy little stalker story. Wii U. Spiders. A user on 4chan bought a Wii U, but it turned out it was broken and inside something weird. Turns out it was a spider egg. He opened the egg and most of them were either dead or paralyzed. All but one. Another user googled and found out that it was a dirt dauber nest. Another user said that the spider that was alive looks like a brown recluse. Quote, if you let it sting you, your arm is going to start rotting while you're alive. A lot of other users started theorizing. One user said, Guys, 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 guys. If OP had this in his Wii U, then it can't be just one of them. What if an employee put one of these in everybody's Wii U at the store OP goes to? Nobody knows where on earth OP lives, but you could be living right next to him and buying a Wii U from the same store he goes to. Just imagine it. You could be buying a Wii U with one of the same things OP has. This post is most likely fake, but it's still extremely creepy to think about if it was real. Chip Chan On Fort Chan, the year is 2008. Anons would discover something quite strange. It was a live stream of a woman sleeping. She seemed to be Korean. And after a long time, some even thought the stream was of a dead woman. But she would eventually get up. After more people got interested in what was going on, some men tried to dig deeper and find out what the newly nicknamed Chip Chan was in fact a Korean woman claiming that she had a mind control chip implanted at quote at a cartilage bone three centimeters off the ankle bone and eyebrow. They found blogs where she explained that a corrupt politician, P, had placed it there and was in control of whether or not she could leave the house also went and how long she would sleep for. Now, this lady, I won't be calling her Chip Chan, except to clarify at this point. And it seems weird since that's what a bunch of people that consider her a lolcow call her. And if you don't know what a lolcow is, it's just someone you find uh, via the internet and you milk them for lols. That's basically it. The state of her living condition is really bad and she hardly leaves the house saying that, that the chip controls her, forcing her to stay. Although she has moved to different houses and stuff, and on stream has been seen leaving the buy stuff. Really, what you're looking at is someone who's unwell in a way and has just hidden herself away from society. Some ordinary gamers, aka Mudahar, has some videos on her and that's basically the most recent info that there is about her. She does have a YouTube channel where she documents very bad rashes and is always saying that the police are recording and mind controlling her. Grenade Toilet a 4chan user finds a live grenade that his dad left when he died. He asks the b-board on 4chan as to what he should do with it. Some users don't believe him, saying it's plastic and to see the bottom. He then shows them it's not plastic and that the bottom is not drilled out. Others tell him to release the pin and put it in the toilet. We don't see any more updates from the user after his last post. Later, a news article in Spanish posts about a teenager setting a grenade off in his bathroom, saying that the police got to his house at around 8.45 p.m. His last post was made at 8.44 p.m. This is really unsettling if it's real. I hope that it isn't, but you can never be too sure. Quake 3 Four-Year Experiment this one refers to a 4chan post that raises some strange questions. 
It starts with Anon sitting that he just remembered he made a Quake 3 server with 16 bots on a teamless deathmatch and had the private server go on for 4 years. So what was the experiment? Well to get to that I need to explain something Anon states about Quake 3 AI. Anon claims that these bots are on a neural network in order to learn what the player is doing in order to do better against the player. So Anon wanted to see what would happen if he just ran the server. Well he checks on the server and sees that the bots are just standing there and other Anons claim that the bots realize if they don't fight they can live so they come to world peace. This prompts Anon, OP, to join the server and the bots just stare at OP. They don't shoot, they just look at him. So OP picks up a gun and kills one of the bots. Then all the bots immediately start attacking and kill Anon, and the server crashes. OP then shows the data each bot held was 512 megabytes, each a total of 8 gigs. Now this was in 2011. Quake only needed 25 megabytes of uncompressed hard disk space for the game files, the minimum install plus 45 megabytes for the windows swap file. After revealing the file size, the thread goes nowhere and dies. Now, if you search into the AIs for Quake 3, the bots did have a new awareness system and had been built on the three other games as the bots were coded by the same person. So the bots were built around reacting to the player like Anon claims and the changes players make in the game. The slash SP 4chan stalker or better known as the Fomerian. I cannot find posts from the slash SP 4chan soccer. So for references, I will be using a reddit thread that also summarizes the events of the century. UTV caught the attention of another user. That user would collect UTV's posts and make collages, posting them on the sports board. It kept going and it kept getting weirder. He once printed them out, placed them on a hamburger, and pretended to eat them. He was named The Archiver. The Archiver recorded every single post UTV made. Soon, it went further. The Archiver started to make poems and songs based on UTV. The Archiver was planning their life together. The scariest and creepiest was that the Archiver was planning on kidnapping UTV and leaving a ransom note to their parents. After a while, the archiver posted his final post. He detailed that his family found out about his obsession and were forcing him to remove everything and to never do it again. They were also monitoring him so he wouldn't do it again. To protect, quote unquote, his work, he released on the b-board, his work, was 97 pages to focus on one user. The last words he posted were, I am sorry to UTV and hope he sees this and understands. This event itself could be a separate video, and I didn't go into much detail in this entry, just in case you guys want me to make a video on this. I will be linking the 97 page PDF file in the description if you guys want to check it out, but that's up to you guys. It'll be there for those of you. Face in the static. This one's actually really uh, kind of recent of the recording of this. It's a post I found very interesting. In this thread, OP posts that while his friend was staying at a hotel, a Super 8 top to be exact, how he was going through the channels on the TV when something strange happened. The TV is only supposed to be able to view 68 channels, but while going through, the friend found channel 73, where TV static was just playing. But then, out of the TV static, you can see a face begin to form. The friend of OP was also in the thread taking pics and uploading video to show people. This led everyone in the thread baffled with no answers to ever be found. OP would upload more images showing the face in the TV had still in fact not gone away and gave the location of the hotel. It was a Super 8 in Barrie, Ontario, room 404. That's what OP would say before leaving. For the most part, the biggest theory was TV parting and that there was a low frequency being jacked and someone was just pulling a prank. Or some hotel employee had changed something in the internal info channel system and had plus TV be a prank to scare people. Either way, really spooky. Rachel Wisner. A girl that told 4chan that she would show boobs for pizza. The pizza was sent, but 4chan never received the boobs. She denied them. Later, she posted on Facebook on how she trolled 4chan. 4chan users then stalked her and found every single detail on her. 
also found out that she had a flight the very next day. 4chan users then called the airport, claiming she had a bomb. 4chan blackmailed her and got what they wanted. In the end, 4chan won, and Rachel ended up posting topless photos of herself. Level 4 Alex, coordinates In 2013, a mysterious user from 4chan would post coordinates to an abandoned location in Tennessee for a secret prize. A few days later, a guy named Alex from Tennessee visits the location. He posts stuff about the stuff he finds. There, he explores the place, and he ends up finding a hard drive. He then proceeds to hear a car on the gravel road above him. He then hears a person approaching. He hides, but after that post, we never hear from him again. Now, we don't know if this is real or not, but most of the conversations around this event is people wanting to know what was on the hard drive Alex found. Carnival Cult This one's a really cool urban myth type story that started on 4chan X, in which it concerns an old arcade game, Carnival. This game actually sold really well, but despite that, it never got a sequel. And the reason for that is because of the unique way the arcade was developed. OP states that the game was developed by a cult that worships in a way of right-wing Celtic rituals. OP claims that many people on the dev team but not all work these strange messages and pseudo rituals into the game so that the player would participate or witness and thus become a victim of the cult's ways. Anon says that he was a former member that got out in 2002 because the things were getting too weird for him and that they recruit from weeb slash nerds and weed them out by trying to push the higher members of the cult to leave that type of behavior behind, but to keep the beliefs. OP says the main reason that the cult started was in spite of the Christian crusade against these people's interests, that they decided to make a secret cult that was the thing Christians would fear and doing the rituals that Christians would fear. OP goes on and says he knows the cult is now defunct, but the members are still in the game industry, and who knows what they're doing right now. OP theorizes that the cult was a front for something else, but if that was for a bigger cult, as some psyop, Anon does not know. Anon's Plot of Land Time 6 on his Maverick Files channel made a video about this post. This 4chan user had his parents coming over and he had to use Google to give them directions, and he noticed a trailer on his land. He then decided to check it out, and turns out someone was living on his land, in the trailer for about a year. He managed to talk to him, and decided not to speak with him, until the morning again. He then returns home, and he hears a gunshot, but they didn't shoot at him. The guy had someone else with him, and they were right outside of his house. The user has his own weapons and decides to hide. He then shoots a warning shot and they start yelling at OP. They then break OP's windows and he shoots at the general area. He calls the police as well. As he's waiting, he ends up shooting and killing one of the guys while the police are still on their way. His house then gets set on fire he proceeds to hop in his car and go down the road. He manages to take a photo of his house and the police when they arrive. The police ask him to get out of his car and he proceeds to get arrested. Glow Stick Injection One game some Anons used to play was that if someone's post number ended with something, OP would have to do it. In that case, OP said whosoever post number ended in 37, OP would inject some glowing liquid into wherever they said. And Anon says for it to go in the wrist, and OP does this because his post number ended in 37, so he injected himself with the liquid, and you see his wrist light up. I don't know if the injection actually happened, because I mean he could have just sprayed some on his skin and made it look like it was going down his wrist. Also, most of the time users stipulate dubs or trips for what to do, not some random number like 37. And there is a system for gaming post numbers, as many Anons enter threads and spam dubs got him all over 4chan. But if OP did really inject himself with whatever was there, there's no way it ended well for him. 
4chan Joker. I got this post from Debunk File. Shout out to him. So, the 4chan Joker, from what most can tell, is some sort of act or a LARP. He posts sporadically and is always going on about to check the news tomorrow. Something's gonna happen, etc., etc. He also posts about his weapon collection, which is quite concerning, considering he has quite a number of weapons. From all the warnings he's posted, nothing has happened yet. Let's hope it stays like that. So, Debunk File searched around, and he believes that it is not the same person in the pictures that is posting these on 4chan. This specific one is creepy in a different sense than most of the other ones. This is most likely a charade, but the weird thing is that it has been going on for a long time. Well, besides most thinking it's an act, let's hope nothing actually comes from this. Also, where we post. This post starts with OP talking about his grandfather, who had recently passed away, and then going over his belongings, he found a picture of a bunker looking thing and remembered about it. OP remembers asking his grandfather about the bunker when he had learned about it, only knowing that his grandfather started constructing it after coming back from World War II, seemingly paranoid of something. He would only get the response from his grandfather that it was an ossuaire. OP didn't know what that was or how to spell it. Well, after some further investigating and prying the door open, he finds a bunch of faces resembling skeletons and men and women along the cave walls, as well as an altar of some kind. Looking further, he realizes there was a human bone on the ground, and upon closer observation, there were actually a lot of bones all over that were seemingly covered in cement. He then hears a laugh behind him and decides, hell no, and bolts out of the bunker. Strangely enough, for some reason, the bone pick was deleted from the thread when it got posted, but some people managed to save it and repost it. Most important was that an anon posted for OP to see the thing his grandpa had built wasn't a bunker, rather an ossuary, a place where human remains are laid the rest. Nikki Katsoris I will not provide any pictures for this entry, due to what the photos show. So, the incident involving Nikki is a tragic one. This, like many others on this list, is a topic that we could cover on a separate video. Nikki first took her family's Porsche 911, which she was not allowed to drive. She then got onto the 241 toll road in Lake Forest. Nikki clipped a Honda Civic while trying to pass it and going over 100 miles per hour or 160 kilometers per hour and crashed into an unmanned concrete toll booth. Nikki died on impact. So this is when 4chan started to get involved. After the photos of her body got leaked on the internet, anonymous 4chan users started to email her parents copies of her body. One of the emails sent to her dad had a subject at her saying, Woohoo daddy, I'm still alive. It made the Katsoris family withdraw from internet use and started homeschooling their youngest daughter. The Katsoris family then later sued the California Highway Patrol and the two dispatch supervisors responsible for leaking the photos. The family ended up winning and received around 200 million damages. Cicada 3301 Cicada 3301 is a quote-unquote secret think tank seeking out people to join it via a bunch of tests that are given via hints. Through these puzzles, you are fed the philosophy of the group. The puzzles are extremely complicated and take all sorts of tools and knowledge. The only way to get accepted is to solve the puzzles yourself. But when the first test was ever uploaded on 4chan, People saw how obtuse the puzzles really were, and so they started teaming up and gathering their knowledge to work together and try to solve the puzzles, and join Cicada 3301. Very quickly, Anons would find out the group was global, as certain parts of the puzzles were in entirely different parts of the world. And unless people teamed up and did their part of the puzzle, which was scan a QR code, it would have never been solved. Cicada would only ever update the next part of the puzzle when someone finished their first part. It would only say when testing started, but never when it was over. 
For that reason, there was no way to know how many people actually joined the group, if any. Level 5 So, the deeper we go, the more disgusting things are on the iceberg. And I'd like to stop at least halfway and give another content warning, saying, if you guys aren't okay with the topics being talked about here, I suggest you click off the video. But I mean, if you enjoy this kind of stuff and want to keep listening, we can't stop you either. I just thought I'd give you guys another content warning, just in case. Crystals. This was an old 4chan post, but a rather ominous one with malicious intentions. In it, OP writes instructions on how to make cool crystals using pennies, ammonia, and other household items. The main issue being that this wasn't a way to make crystals, but rather how to make mustard gas, which if you don't know, is a very harmful chemical that through skin exposure can cause a whole host of painful side effects. The worst part among the instructions was to blow into the chemical concoction with a straw. Now OP did this to ensure that if anyone were to do this, they would breathe in the mustard gas, causing even more serious harm to the person. Several days later, an anon would post about how they almost died following these instructions, but was taken to the hospital just in time. Now, if the post that followed the original was real or not, there's no way to know. But either way, when people post instructions online, you never know what the real end product is, so be very careful. Red Alien Lights Basically, it's three separate incidents that 4chan users posted on X. The OPs ended up seeing red alien lights in the room. Basically, the posts go, the OPs ended up seeing red alien lights in the room, or in others' posts, a gel cell. They then ended up getting abducted by aliens. One of said posts was posted on March 19th, 2018, at 7.11 a.m. He then proceeds to hear whistles. He also starts seeing shadows. He ends up leaving his apartment and is outside in his car. He calls the police and they send someone to his location. He never returns back to the thread after that. On April 2nd, 2018, he ends up seeing a UFO. He keeps taking pictures but winds up going to take a shower. The next update says, there's something in my house with a picture of a red light. 4chan users then started warning him and telling him to hide and get a weapon and also tells him about the other red light thread. He shows them his weapon. His last post is a picture of his door and a big shadow on it. It says, I see a shadow. It's moving. It doesn't know I'm here. No police sirens yet. The last post is a longer one. But it's about OP and his cellmate getting abducted by red lights. This one's a little different, since it isn't the OP disappearing, but him retelling the story and how they were abducted. I won't talk much about this one, but it's very strange that a similar event happened three times, and each of the times it was posted on 4chan. Time 6 on his Maverick Files YouTube channel already posted videos on these and are really well made. I really recommend checking the videos out. I'll link both of those in the description. Spoon Experiment But just like above, this was also a harmful prank that someone posted on 4chan in an effort to get someone hurt. This one was more dangerous because it was far simpler and required less materials, making it more likely than anyone would try it. In essence, a spoon would be turned into exploding shrapnel. The way in doing this was wrapping a spoon in duct tape, a lot, then heating it up for two minutes and running it through cold water. This would force the loose and warm tape to contract rather quickly, violently squeezing the still warm spoon, putting enough pressure causing it to explode. There were a couple of anons that replied in that thread warning people that they would seriously get hurt if they did that. The Toe OP delivers on this post, so in case you guys don't know, most of the time OP does not deliver, but in this post 
OP does deliver. He starts off by saying, Dubs decides what I do. With a picture of his toe. The one 4chan user who got Dubs said, Cut off his toe. Many thought he wasn't going to do it. But later, he posts a picture of him cutting circulation on the toe. Then, 40 minutes later, he posts a picture of his toe cut off. A lot of 4chan users were in shock that they did it. No one expected OP to actually deliver. Ballad of Baby This is a long tale of a lonely robot or someone who uses the R9K board a lot, which stands for Robot 9000. Well, anyways, this takes place while OP's in high school. He was kind of a friendless loser and didn't have anyone to talk to during lunch, so he sits alone on his own table. But then one day, a girl in really pink and very girly kind of lolita fashion, not the anime thing, the type of fashion, begin talking to each other. Since she came up and wanted to sit with him, you'd think they'd start talking, but actually the opposite happens. They just kind of sit there and acknowledge each other but don't talk to each other. But while this is happening, but while sitting with each other at the same table, he witnesses two distinct events that happen to revolve around this girl, now named Baby. Baby, after getting quite loudly berated by a group of female bullies, which surprises Anon since he was only seen dude bullying, not women bullying each other, witnesses Baby quietly whisper something in the bully's ear, which causes her to just snap and scream, and her friends take her away and Baby just goes back to lunch like nothing happened. In another, some kid spills soup on her and Baby loses it. With her long fingernail, she claws out the kid's eyes and while screeching, it takes two different school officials to take her off the kid and then she is not seen for another month at the school. And when Anon does see her, he asks what happened, where he learns that she frequents mental hospitals to check up on her well-being and that she in fact wasn't burned by the soup. He finally gets talking to her towards the end of the school year and gets invited to her house where he witnesses her home life and it's normal for the most part. Just not her. In her extremely decorated room, of course in the Lolita fashion, they sit and drink whiskey. They sit and drink whiskey because she filled it in her teacups. They talk very little, but she does admit to liking Jake aka OP because he just agrees with her. OP is just thinking about getting some, and you know what I mean by that. At this point OP is now attracted to baby and well, he's just letting his desire take control and do whatever she says. This eventually leads us to one of their dates where baby who has a driver's permit and her father's car takes Anon out on a date just agreeing with whatever baby wants, which eventually would lead them together to an abandoned house in the middle of the woods, where he suddenly realizes that this is all wrong and fucked up, but too scared to say no, he follows her in. While they're in the house, she's constantly questioning it, but he just keeps saying yes out of fear until they reach the basement, where he sees a rack of tools. Now he kinda tries to struggle and say no to her, but just ends up sticking with her after this and she confesses that she likes him while he silently in his own mind realizes he fucked up bad and it's too late to back out of the relationship anyway this leads where all high school relationships lead to awkward high schooler intimacy and that's honestly kind of where the story just ends but right before ending we're left off on two massive bombshells first Anon is moving in with Baby as both are now adults and out of high school and that she definitely has killed two other girls before and served time for it but as a minor and it's implied that the charge was something like manslaughter. Though the story doesn't end there, there is a part 2 to the story. In the second part of the baby tale, the only thing that really happens is we learn that baby is in the medical field now. She was actually starting to become a normal human but then something snaps. She starts disappearing for days on end and it all comes ahead when one day OP finds her in the house, all bloody, and back to her old cell. Out of fear, he ends up trying to confront her, but then realized that there was someone else there helping her, only referring to that person as Bear. And Bear was referred to in the first story when they are together in her room for the first time, drinking the whiskey tea. Uh, she mentions Bear, but it was actually a stuffed bear. In this case, it's like a person named Bear. Anyways, this leads to him getting knocked out, finding himself in a basement of this torture room that he saw in the first story. She had been with child for some time, and since he hadn't realized, she slipped into her old ways due to fear. She then begins to realize OP is losing his trust in her and her fear in her, so she starts doing stuff to reinforce that fear. This all leads to him giving up and just giving in to her and 
passing out and waking up the next day with his left ring finger missing and just proceeds to accept it all. In the end of the story, Anon is locked in the house with Baby again and just sits with her on the couch like nothing happened, stating to everyone on 4chan that they already had their kid and she is just like her mom. Loli Chan. This event is absolutely disgusting, so beware. The nickname Loli Chan is given to an anonymous cam girl from Florida who began posting on 4chan sometime in 2006 at the age of 13. By her own account, Loli began making friends online through anime themed social network site Gaia Online in 2005. At age 12, she began experimenting with cybersex through Yahoo Messenger and trading nude photos of herself for Gaia Gold, a former currency on the site. Soon after, an internet friend named Josh introduced her to 4chan, warning her that, while it's fun, pedophiles were known to lurk on the site, and advised against posting photos of herself. Despite the warning, she began sharing photos of herself on 4chan a year later, starting with a time-stamped selfie Due to her youthful appearance, she was quickly given the nickname Loli. Loli means the Japanese abbreviation of the Lolita complex. By May of the same year, a poster on the Loveline Companion, a message board dedicated to Dr. Drew Pinsky syndicated radio show, began a thread asserting that internet users band together to shut her image board down calling it a haven for pedophiles, sexual deviants, and all kinds of unsavory people. The poster also suggested that Loli might be an undercover cop attempting to lure the predators. That year, a private military contractor called Jacqueline Singh came across a photo of Loli in her Catholic school uniform. Singh called the school to notify them of her online activity, resulting in a meeting with her parents the school principal and the head priest of the associated church. Though her parents banned her from using the internet, she continued to post photos and videos online in places her parents would not find her, including her board on Chan Sluts. At 14, she met her first online boyfriend, a 30-year-old whom she dumped eight months later after seeing his photo for the first time. Her second and last online boyfriend went with the pseudonym George Peard and pressured her into sharing nude photos with him which he posted on 4chan I am God a more popular one seen all the time on 4chan green text threads even though it isn't really a green text as well as just being a very popular urban myth is the I am God thread on 4chan this thread starts with OP talking about his friend's PC, and O keeps finding these text files as well as images that he hasn't downloaded. But at the same time, strange occurrences are happening at the house, such as lights turning on and off, which leads OP to a question. Can ghosts haunt computers? So Anons tell OP to start posting the images that appear on the computer, and this leads to some strange red and black images being posted by OP. And Anon would realize what's going on by stacking the images, you could see a face was beginning to form. On one of the images OP released had some really hard to read text and Anon, and Anon tried figuring it out. Some realized that when the text was translated, it would say, I am God. Then OP updates us with more info. Currently at his friend's house, something strange happened. On his way to shower in a spare room that OP's friend keeps clothes in, he sees that a light went out. And as he is passing, he comes back recording with his phone. He doesn't seem to catch anything, but then OP shows that there's this weird red glowing light just kind of hovering in the room, and it's really hard to see. Anon points out that it kind of sort of looks like the face that OP's friend found on his PC. The face of God. So OP's friend goes over to OP's house to stay the night, and the last piece of the face is posted and thus people can now see the face of God. Also while this was happening, some Anons replied to OP that they were getting strange messages from a phone number. And when they posted the face of God in response to the number, they got sent a weird binary code. It translated as, we all die. Level 6 
Israeli army deserter. A more sad and tragic post, something you wouldn't expect from something posted on poll. But this one shows a soldier's breaking point when it comes to being forced to commit what are war crimes. In this post, OP writes about his intentions to abandon his IDF post. Him and his squad were ordered to demolish a hospital because it might be Hamas related. Now for those who don't know, Israel and Palestine have been at conflict for a very long time. Now for those who don't know anything about the Israel-Palestine conflict, just to put it simplest, the IDF, which is the Israeli Defense Force, sees Hamas as a terrorist organization. Now OP says that he was sent undercover earlier to the hospital and cleared it, that the only thing there at the hospital was a nice staff. He shows that he's an actual citizen of Israel by showing his passport and leaves by saying that he's likely going to be tortured and put in jail for deserting. A couple of hours later, news breaks about a hospital in Gaza being hit by an Israeli strike. OP blows up China. So the event itself is actually real. But according to this 4chan post, it was coordinated by a 4chan user. The post says, the fire is getting higher. The smell is incredible. I think this is going to be my last job. There will be more explosions. Just wait B. I'll deliver it. Just like I said before. 23 minutes. I don't know now, but I think I need more time for the new explosions. China is getting hot tonight. Don't try to find me. My life is worthless. I'm going to delete it all in my next step. Even my life. Don't waste your time. Check the news, hour by hour. On August 12, 2015, a series of explosions on the port of Taijin in Taijin, northern China, killed 173 people, according to official reports, and injured hundreds of others. The explosions occurred at a container storage station in the Baihing New Area of Taijin, China. The first two explosions occurred 33 seconds apart. The second explosion was far larger and involved the detonation at about 800 tons of ammonium nitrate, approximately 256 tons TNT equivalent. Fires caused by the initial explosions continued to burn uncontrolled throughout the weekend, resulting in eight additional explosions on the 15th of August. The time quoted on Wikipedia was 1450 Coordinated Universal Time, UTC, which is 9.50 a.m. my time, while the post was 3.12 my time. It seems like it wasn't actually OP since the explosions happened five hours apart, with the explosions coming first. But it's most likely someone who had the news before anyone else and decided to take advantage of it. Although, my math could be wrong, and if I am, correct me. David Kalik. David Kalik is a disgusting human who posted pictures of his dead girlfriend, which he claims to have choked out on 4chan, and he proceeds to brag about it on a revenge porn thread telling other anons to look at the local news at Port Orchard, Washington. To make things even worse, he planned on having the woman's kid come and discover the body. His plan was to have the kid call the cops and then he would confront the police with a BB gun disguised as a real gun in order to commit suicide. But thankfully, he was caught by police officers instead and now has to rot in prison for 83 years. Emily Sanders Back in 2007, a post saying, if anyone can guess correctly their own number, I will tell you where she's buried. The girl in the picture is Emily Sanders. Eventually, someone ended up guessing correctly, and as OP said, he sent the coordinates. The coordinates was put in Google Maps, which shows up in Climax, Kansas, really close to where the police found her body, about 50 miles east of El Dorado, Kansas. Neil McInnes Neil McInnes would post on 4chan before committing a mass shooting. It was at a River City College satellite campus at River City Mall. In the thread he posted where it was going to happen and how he planned on doing it. With a shotgun he would manage to injure two women. 
Thankfully, the security cops would manage to stop him. On 4chan, he also posted what news to look out for, so just like David Callan, he was looking for attention. He even had a link to the city's emergency service radio so others on 4chan could listen while the whole thing went down. He was sentenced to 68 years in prison with 30 years suspended. Something that made this even worse was during the mass shooting, he tried to alert people by acting like a victim and a cop as well. Thankfully, it didn't seem to work. Level 7 You made it to the final layer on the iceberg. For these next entries, we will probably not be adding any photos, due to how graphic some of these can be. Bianca Devins Probably one of the most prolific events that has connections to 4chan. The family themselves said they don't want any of these images shared, so I will not be sharing them. I hope you can understand. She was a 17-year-old girl and would frequent 4chan, where she would be found on R9K, SOC, and FA. She also had a Discord. Most of the boards she visited were mostly male, especially R9K. Eventually, she had a lot of orbiters, one of which would end up being her killer, Brandon Clark. Brandon invited her to a concert, and she agreed. She met up with another friend at a concert, Alex and she seemed a lot more interested in him rather than Brandon. Eventually, Brandon sees Bianca and Alex share a kiss. After that, his mood changes, and he was her ride home. Then, Brandon posts a photo of Bianca with her throat slit open on Discord saying, Hey fuckers, you're gonna have to find someone else to orbit. Apparently, there is also a video of the murder, but I could not find it. I'm going to stop this one here. If you'd like to know more, a lot of different channels have already covered this event. Chris Chan, aka Christine Weston Chandler. Now I'm not going to bog you down with the whole history of Chris Chan, rather just the ties Chris Chan has to 4chan. 4chan was one of the first websites along with Encyclopedia Dramatica and Kiwi Farms to notice Chris Chan's Sonichu series in which a fictionalized version of Chris and an amalgam of Sonic and Pikachu help Chris on his quest to find a girlfriend and lose his virginity while saving the town of Quickville or CWCville which stands for Kristen Weston Chandlerville. In 2007, when after finding out Encyclopedia Dramatica and 4chan had been mocking him and his creations online, he would respond to them by letting them know that he had high functioning autism. What 4chan would specifically do out of the group of those three websites was well make not safe for work images of female Sonichu characters. Instead of ignoring the trolls, Christian would, let's say, take inspiration from the event and in his Sonichu comic series, because as he did make Sonic comics, Chris would go to 4 cent garbage, which is what he called 4chan and like Encyclopedia Dramatica combined in this comic, and would go on a whole adventure in order to shut down the website, which he eventually does. He also got 4 cent to stop writing slanderous things about him and his love life, and then in the whole Chris Chan CWCville lore, it turns out that 4 cent worked for this evil witch called Slaway Ram, who was trying to ruin Chris's love life. And uh, trust me, if you don't know, you don't want to know. The strangest thing he did though was draw not safe for work artwork of the female Sun and True character to get back at the 4chan trolls with her assumedly having the correct anatomical parts that Christian wanted the character to have. 4chan would continue to keep trolling Chris but later he would have specific trolls come after him and 4chan and Kiwi Farms would kind of just regard him as a low cow. Also I'm sure the name sounds familiar to you because Christian now going as Christine because she transitioned took advantage of his mother who was suffering from dementia. So that story blew up and brought Christine into the whole public consciousness and it was reported on everywhere. Reuben Braithwaite Reuben watched a lot of footage of extreme violence on 4chan, which showed mass killings and beheadings. This desensitized him he got Fiona Scorfield to leave her house by saying that he found an injured cat, then hitting her with the blunt side of an axe and slitting her throat open with a sword. He apparently watched her bleed out before calling the police. He would later tell the officers he was convinced he had to do it and that his motivation was to shock people to change my life. I just wanted her dead so I could have a life. I'm just fed up, he told officers. 
Ruben was jailed for life, with a minimum of 15 years. I could go into more detail, but I feel like this event is better suited for a separate video. I didn't go into detail about the actual events and the people that were affected by it. But if anyone's interested, we could make a video on this. Shuabi. Shuabi, also known as Shua Baslam, who was only 18 year old, is one of the more tragic tales that come out of 4chan. It is a sad story of a man committing suicide and it being posted online. While he did stream it to some of his friends and on YouTube where it got removed, as what happens when anything involving 4chan or Reddit, his unfortunate passing would be twisted into some strange tale of being forced to take HRT and being groomed by a trip code user known as Rayco. And so rumors of Shuabi's passing being caused by these events were spread, but that isn't what occurred. The Rayco stuff might or might not be real, but the Shuabi situation has nothing to do with Raiko, and Raiko only likes the attention he gets from the event and try to play into it. Rather, Shuab Aslam is a story of a young man who suffered with extreme depression, and even had evidence show up showing that he even thought of being a spree killer and the likes of Elliot Roger. Thankfully, he didn't do that, but still unfortunately, he would take his own life. The worst part of the video is that after he does it, you could hear his mother and family come in and check on him and start to cry and scream at what happened to their family. It's a truly awful situation made worse by the internet. I can only wish that anyone going through this type of situation seek help and comfort from others. And if there are resources available for you, please do seek them out. Suicide is not a solution or an answer. The Bee Killer This last post is another one of the most prolific events that have happened on 4chan. I will also not be showing any pictures of this. It's way too graphic to show on video, and many other people have also covered this topic. But we feel it should be on this iceberg due to the severity of it. On August 2015, a post showing many graphic photos of dead people appeared on 4chan, with OP saying, I have killed several women for pleasure. If you can guess a name of any of these women, I will upload their photo. No more than 10 names per post. Any more than that will be ignored. Some are Polaroids, and others were taken with a disposable camera. I also have pictures of them before death, when I was able to do so. If you can guess all the names, I will show you where I dumped the body in 1999. The first one is free, as her name is unlikely to be guessed. OP then proceeds to post the photos of the first one with a sticky note time stamped August 21st, 2015. One woman was identified as Shauna Maynard. Then on September 2015, another third appeared claiming it was OP with more photos of dead people. Now, I do not recommend searching up any of these photos or both of these threads 